ruin has come to our family. I'm Reginald Gickington, and you can call me Reggie. Today we'll be continuing our painting journey through the miniatures of the Darkest Dungeon board game by Mythic Games. In today's video, we'll be finishing the Brigands by doing the Brigand Bloodletter. This large nincharge highwayman wields a cat of nine tails and a pistol, and can apply bleed and stress to your entire party. We'll be using a lot of similar techniques to the rest of the brigands, but the bloodletter being shirtless affords us the opportunity to practice painting skin and muscles. As always, with so few tutorials out there, we'll be learning how to paint these characters together, and experimenting with new techniques in our quest to do justice to the original artwork. Before we begin, we always prime our miniatures in black to give a dark undercoat. Then we'll begin with dark sea blue applied to the fabric parts like the hood and the loincloth. Now we'll undercoat the skin using Bugman's Glow, avoiding the necklace and the wristbands. The next step is the pants, which will be Steel Legion Drab, much like the Fusilier and Hunter. Consistencies like these help sell these characters as part of one group. They shop at the same store, so to speak. Now we'll apply Necromancer Cloak to the bracelets and the boots, as well as the two belts around his belly, to give the appearance of black leather. For the pistol and the grip of the whip, apply Rhinox Hide, as always avoiding spilling over onto the details around them. Now we're going to apply the lead bilger in several spots. These will be the studs on the studded bracer, the rings on his smooth bracer, and the buckles on his belt and shoes. We're also going to use Stormhost silver on the metal parts of his pistol, pommel, and hilt of his whip, as these are slightly brighter than the other metal parts on him. To finish the whip, apply Rakarth Flesh to the rope parts all the way to the tip. Now we'll finish off the base coats with Rune Lord Brass on his necklace.
And next comes the wash, with any black wash of your choosing all over except for the skin. I'm using Vallejo Black Wash. The skin gets flesh wash, and the necklace gets a brown wash, in this case, Army Painter's Strong Tone. Truthfully, wash colors aren't extremely important. The difference between Null Oil and Black Wash should only ever really come down to which one you happen to have on hand, in my opinion. As such, you should be able to swap between brands and achieve similar results to mine. Next comes the cloth parts. We'll be doing these the same way we did for the rest of the brigands. That's dark sea blue as a thick highlight, dark green as a medium highlight, and a one-to-one -one mix of dark green and gray green as an edge highlight. If you want to see these steps sequentially, you can watch my other video on painting brigands. The idea is that each highlight gets sequentially smaller so that you build up a gradient from dark to light. Now we're going to use Steel Legion Drab to return some vibrancy to the pants, focusing on the large flat planes and raised ridges, and leaving the recesses shaded. Our next few steps will focus on the muscles. To start, we're going to use Bugman's Glow, and we're going to apply this to all of the skin areas except for the recesses. You want to leave the gaps between each muscle shaded, where you would imagine there's less light striking in the area. Next, we're going to apply tan to the upwards facing parts of the muscles. We're going to treat tan like it's a zenithal highlight. As the sun shines down from above, the top facing part of each muscle receives the most light. On the pecs, you can almost visualize a line running horizontally along through each nipple. Above it, using tan to light it up, and below it, Bugman's Glow. Below that, the pec looms over the chest, making a shadow represented by the flesh wash we used earlier. Don't forget to do the face while doing all these steps. Moving along, we'll apply Strong Tone to the nipples and the mouth. This brown wash will help darken these areas and give them a different tone to the rest of the skin parts. Next, if you remember the swords from our last video, and the blood splatter effect, we'll be doing that to the heads of his whip. We'll be stippling the fist in red with a mostly dry brush all over the top half of each rope, then Evil Sun's Scarlet at the top quarter so that the whip gets more bright and bloody as it reaches its tip. We'll be using Strong Tone once again now, applied all over the Bloodletter's skin. This part was a bit of an artistic risk. In-game, the Bloodletter has notably darker skin than the rest of his brigands, and as I was painting, I was forced to choose. Did I want to leave good enough alone and stick with the well-painted but too light skin tone, or did I want to be as accurate as possible? And in the end, I opted to darken all the skin with a brown wash, and I'm pleased to admit that the results paid off.
but we can't exactly leave the skin as it is now, since the wash doesn't really discriminate and evenly colors the entire area. We need to return that same upwards facing highlight that we did with the tan earlier, this time with a one to one mix of Bugman's Glow and Rhinox Hide. Rhinox Hide is too dark to use on its own, and Bugman's Glow too bright, but together, Bugman's Glow gives the Rhinox Hide a certain fleshy redness and helps turn it into a more fitting tone. While doing this, be sure to use a precise brush and, on the scars on his shoulders and chest, fill those in with just Bugman's Glow. Scar tissue is naturally more red than the rest of the skin, and we want to reflect that. And now we wrap things up with Mechanica Standard Grey, Abaddon Black, Black Templar, and Black Wash, which we'll be using to apply the distinct black shadows and lines, along with the base itself. While doing the black shadows, be sure to edge highlight all of the scar areas with black, as those are perhaps the easiest and most prominent ways to show the cartoonish darkness. Remember when doing the black parts that you don't necessarily need to get every single black part from the original art but identifying a few key areas like the scars, the eyes, and the recesses in fabric and cloth can really be more than the sum of their parts. And that rounds it out, the last of the brigands, for now. Next time, we'll cover more heroes and teach you how to paint some strangers in a strange land. As always, take your time, enjoy your painting, and don't sweat it if you mess up, because every mistake is fixable. Have fun painting your Darkest Dungeon miniatures, and feel free to tag me on Instagram, at ReggieGick, to show me how yours turn out. Links to my affiliated socials can be found in the description. Feel free to subscribe or like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with another painting tutorial.